Hey, what's up guys? So today we're gonna be shooting rollers and me personally, myself, I'm not very good at them, but my buddy Frank here has a lot of experience doing car photography, shooting rollers. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what rollers are and how to actually shoot them? Yeah, of course. Uh, rollers are basically when you're shooting from one car at another while moving down the ro road. So rolling down the road. Now rollers, they're definitely one of those things with automotive photography that take a little more time to perfect and a little more practice to get to the point where uh, every shot you take is good. And even then, you're always gonna have blurry shots because you're shooting moving subjects at really low shutter speeds. Yeah, so tell me about rollers and how to actually take a good photo. So you kind of explained how what rollers are and how to actually get them from a moving car to another moving vehicle, but like, t tell me about the settings or, you know, your shutter speed. Are there any are there any rules that you have to follow while actually shooting it for photography? Yeah, so when shooting this kind of photography, there's no like rule set that you have to follow, but there are things that help and guidelines that I kind of operate as like a baseline every time I go out and shoot rollers. So as a good rule of thumb, um, I take whatever speed I'm doing and I chop it in half and that's gonna be the shutter speed I start at. So if I'm doing 60 miles an hour, and I'm shooting from one car to the other, that we're both doing 60 miles an hour, I'll put my shutter speed to 1 30th of a second. That'll get the background nice and blurry while I'll get the car nice and in focus and nice sharp uh, detail on that car. Now I'll have to try a few times, but it'll be a whole lot easier than if I'm shooting at let's say 1 5th of a second trying to do that while hanging out of a car going 60 miles an hour. And the reason for the slow shutter speed as well is for all my newbies out there who are in photography, when you really crank your shutter speed, you're stopping motion. And so the look we're going for is this in motion car while maintaining the car being sharp. So the way that we're achieving that is we're actually able to blur the background with our sh slow shutter speed. But since we're gonna be matching the speed of the car we're taking photos of, it's gonna be like sharp and crisp. And like Frank mentioned earlier, you're gonna get out of focus photos and it definitely takes practice. Yeah, and never be afraid. I mean, we're shooting digital, so always shoot more and have more in post to look at. Um, that's why I tell everybody with this, that don't feel bad if one out of 100 photos is a good photo. I've had times where that's my hit rate. It's completely fine. Um, just shoot a bunch and don't be afraid about your shutter speed. All right, so before we actually go and shoot the rollers, uh, Frank, I want you to tell me kind of what you brought with you today and what is a must have gear when you're actually gonna start shooting rollers. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so there's a few things that you absolutely need when you shoot rollers. Um, one of those is gonna be people. So shooting rollers is not something you can just go out and do by yourself. You have somebody driving the car that you're shooting, you who are actually taking photos, and you need somebody to drive the car that you're shooting out of. You can't shoot while driving and also drive the other car. So you can't do it by yourself. You need some friends and you need some help for this one. Um, another thing that you're gonna need is obviously a camera body. This isn't something that you can really do with your phone because you can't really control the shutter speed on your phone. So you're gonna want something where you have control over the shutter speed, the ISO and the aperture. Um, I really recommend if you're not too sure on settings, put it in shutter priority and try from there. Uh, the big thing that you're focused on for these is shutter speed. Uh, you don't really, I mean, ISO, you just wanna keep it 100 and then aperture you adjust for the brightness. Um, another thing that really helps is gonna be having a wider angle lens. So on this, if you have a 50 millimeter, you can do rollers on a 50 millimeter, but it's not the best. Uh, it's better to have a wide angle lens so you can get that car right up and close and it shows more uh, movement in the world. So I usually use a 2470 around the 24 to 35 millimeter mark on my full frame sensor. If you're shooting on a crop, maybe use something that's like a 16 or 18 to maybe around 24 on a crop sensor. Um, now we're getting, so that's, that's what you need to shoot rollers and now we have the nice parts about shooting rollers if you're getting a little bougie like me uh, and you've done this a few times first of all having a nicer camera body something that shoots uh, i think the a7 IV shoots over 10 fps that means i can just fire off photos on here and i can just hold down the shutter button and just rack through the photos i used to shoot on canon i used the 1dx absolutely loved the thing and it was so nice for rollers and panning shots where i could just shoot a hundred photos in a few seconds, no problem there. Um, the other thing is having radios. This sounds kind of weird, a little different than most photography, 
But on this, communicating between your driver of the car that you're shooting from you with a camera, it's really hard to do hand signals when you're going 40 miles an hour and there's a bunch of wind and they're not looking at you, they're looking at the road. You wanna be able to radio to them and tell them, hey, come up a little closer, go to this side of the car. I want you to do this speed, stuff like that. Another thing that's really nice to have for rollers is a circular polarizer. Now, I mean, on these, generally, that's for any automotive photography, just cut out reflections. Um, it holds true with rollers, cutting out windshield reflections or keeping windshield reflections and cutting out uh, reflections on the body of the car. Uh, having a polarizer is your friend for that. All right, everyone, so that's all the equipment that you need and then some equipment that's nice to have. So we're gonna stop wasting your time. We're gonna get into the rollers right now. Wrist straps definitely help. Um, yeah, don't shoot rollers out the window without a wrist strap. If you have a neck strap, it's really gonna get in the way of you trying to get this camera wherever you need it to be out the window. So at this light up here, you're gonna make a right. All right, right there, hold it at uh, 60. All right, we're doing 60. All right, everyone, so that was the short uh, edition on how to shoot rollers. Now, we didn't shoot very much today because we did start during golden hour, so we did lose a lot more light than we anticipated. So I did not get to shoot, but Frank got to shoot all his photos. And how do you think it went? I think it went great. I think uh, especially, you know, I'm just having fun. That was what, 30 minutes, if that? Yeah, if that. Yeah, and you can see, I mean, super unique photos that anybody's gonna look at and they're, they're next level compared to anything else out there. All right, so everyone as well, shout out to Zach for letting us take photos of his really dope car. And like always, remember, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.